hello viewers welcome to this youtube channel have your work permit or study permit been denied in the past or you've applied for express entry i mean you've not gotten anything you need information on the status of your application all right this is what you can do you can actually apply for what is called the gcms note all right it's an access to information and privacy ati peer you can actually do that apply online and you can actually get to know while your study visa or your work permit as the case is why it was denied and the visa officer that actually treated your file will give you additional information other than what you got in the refusal letter on while he or she actually refused or rejected your application i'll be taking you i'll be walking you through how you can actually do that online i will take you to ircc website how you can actually apply for the gcms notes so that you get to know the main reason why your application was refused or the status of your application that you have submitted to IRCC. Okay, viewers, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. I still remember my humble self, MC Bernardino. This is Canada Reality, where I dish out content for those that are already in Canada and those that are aspiring to migrate into Canada. Is this your first time on this YouTube channel? Please do me the honor, hit on the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, so that anytime I drop a video, you'll be among the first to get it. And for our returning viewers, please, thank you very much for believing in us. Please endeavor to share this video, and we promise not to disappoint you. All right, so in order for you to apply all you have to do is go on google and type in gcms notes type it in there and uh yeah the first one that comes to take is uh, that's the canada website how to make a request under the access to information act okay and that takes you right away to cic website okay and once you get to the cic website uh there are some information there for you to read on how to get started but uh, just because I've read this, I'll just quickly draw your attention to these two. The fee for the request under the Access to Information Act is $5. And to send a request, you must be a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident of Canada, or an individual or corporation currently in Canada. So that means that outside Canada, if you're outside Canada, you can't do this. You need somebody in Canada to do it on your behalf. All right. So let's just go right away to apply online. And if you choose to do mail, but I'm going to do, I advise you to do apply online because it's faster. Then you have to pick English or French. What language do you want? English as our own case is. Uh, more information for you to read here. So feel free to read those information. And uh, because I've already read it, I hit on next. And here are some privacy notices for you to also read too. Please take your time, go through them. If you agree, click on agree and simply just continue. All right. So now these are what we need to do access to information and privacy privacy atip online request so we have to fill the request and information act and record selection attach document review and validate so those are what we need to do so first question is please select the department where you would like to submit an access to information or privacy request so a lot of options here so we'll just go for what is obtainable in our own case we're looking at immigration refugee and citizenship canada then after that, you read the terms and condition. If you're okay with it, agree and uh, click on that and continue. So to be able to make a request, you must be a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident of Canada or an individual or corporation presently in Canada. Please select the category that best describes you. So in this case now, whoever, if you're outside Canada and you find somebody in Canada to apply for you, the person that is applying for you is the person that will fill in the information here. But if you are in Canada and you're applying for yourself, you have to fill your information here. Otherwise, whoever is representing you is is our information is required here. So, so uh, in my own case, I pick Canadian citizen and um, surname. I will just say A B C. Given name E D F. Street number one two three. And uh, street name I will just say B N M. Street. okay and uh name of business organization so if a business organization is representing you you put the name there and the unit and whatever so i'll just continue city i'll just say to run to province ontario country is already there canada and the poster code we we'll just say k1 k one k one and the telephone number i mean we just say six one three five 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 one two three four if 
If you have a fax number, the person representing you has a fax number, you put it in there. So go to email, email is qwe at gmail.com. You enter the same email again. So please note, you don't have to use cap logs that I use. I mean, I'm just using it. It's not a must. You have to do that. So the next question is, are you requesting information on your own behalf? So if you're doing it for yourself, you say yes. If you're doing it on behalf of somebody, you say no. Because I'm doing it on behalf of somebody just to demonstrate to you. I say no. Are you requesting information concerning a diseased individual? I mean, someone that is dead. So if the person is dead, you say yes. If not, you say no. Um, so there's some information more for you to read. Now, the next is select the category that best describes you. Okay. So academia, academia, business, media, organization, member of the public decline to identify. In my case, I'm just going to choose member of the public. Okay. And uh, the last but not least question on this uh, page is how would you prefer to receive the requested records? So the options are email or CD. Nobody uses CD anymore. So I'm just going to say email. And the next thing is continue. All right. So that takes us to the next phase, the act and record selection. Okay. So here you read the information there. And uh, so the question is, what type of information, information are you requesting? So uh, privacy act or access to information act. I'm just going to say access to information act. What type of records do you wish to request? Immigration, citizenship, records. That's what we want and that's what we're going to pick. Okay. And um, now you have to fill in the information of the person who you are representing. I mean, the person, or if you're doing it for yourself, now you have to put your information again here. Okay. So, so in this case, I'm just going to say YHN is the name. Given name is KLM. Eight of bats. Let's say 2000 January. So now we go to client, unique client identifier. So now you're representing somebody, right? You're filling this on behalf of the, your client, or if you are the one filling it for yourself. So that means you must, if you have applied to IRCC before in the past for study, for work, for PR, for express entry, then in the past, if you have applied before, you have a UCI number. So that is what they need here. But if this is your first time, you don't have a UCI number, then probably you leave that blank. But if you have, if you have applied before, go to your document that was sent to you by IRCC and you can see your UCI number, the unique client identifier there. Okay. So you need to put it, this in there. So one, two is three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, space, seven, eight, nine, one. Okay. You put that there. If you have any alias, you put it there. Okay. If not, you leave it blank. It's not important. What type of record would you like to request? So there are some options here. So in this case, I'm just going to say temporary residence. You have to pick what is obtainable to you. Which specific information are you looking for? So we have status updates on file, reason for refusal, officer's electronics notes. If that is not obtainable, you then you go for the other one, which is the application supporting document and correspondent sent to. So whichever your case is, but in our own case, status update or file, reason for his refusal, officer's note, because you want to know why uh, the notes probably on why your application is being delayed or why your visa was rejected, whatever the case is. Now, if you choose the electronics notes of the immigration or citizenship officer, you will receive a report that indicates the status update of your application. The officer's note, reason for refusal, ETC. So now they're asking for your file number. So just like I said earlier on that, if you have applied to IRCC before in the past, then you have your UCI number and you have your file number, which is your application number. If you have applied before for study, it will be start. It will start with S. If it is work work permit, it will start with W. If it is express entry, it will start with E. So I'm just giving you an insight so that you know where to look on your IRCC uh, document. So let's say you have applied for study before in the past. So we're just gonna say S, and we say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we just leave it as that. And um, now you have a space to use the space below to provide relevant information to help IRCC process your request. Maximum of 500 characters. So it's just a short note. It's not compulsory just to tell them, okay, in this case, you can say, I 
um, requesting for the ECMS notes just to know more about why I study study visa application was refused. Refused. Okay, it's very, very simple, very short. You don't, and if you have more information, you can just simply just provide it there. And the next thing is just click on continue. Now we have to go to attach document. So under attach document, so the person that you're applying, that is, uh, take for instance, I'm here and the person I'm applying for representing, I'm helping out is wherever outside Canada. So the person needs to give me a consent, a letter that says that, okay, I should represent him or her and it should be signed. So Consent. The consent must indicate the name of the person giving his or her consent and to whom the consent is given. The consent document must be dated and signed by the person given the consent. You must include the consent of each individual if there are more than one person, right? So, so the consent letter you've gotten from the person, you need to upload it here. So I'll just look for a document and I'll just upload. Okay, if you have more documents to upload, you add. And under the other documents, other documents, if you have additional documents that you want to upload, maybe you want to upload the refusal letter you got from IRCC or any other supporting document that could actually help the visa officer, feel free to actually upload it. It's optional, so you don't have to, but you need a consent letter if you are, if someone gives you the consent to represent him or her, otherwise the application will not be processed, okay? So if you are done with that, then just go to continue. Okay, so now we are the review and validate. That's the page we are now. So all you can do here is just review your what you have filled in there to be sure that there's no mistake. If you have any reason to modify, please do that because you don't want to provide the wrong information, right? So if everything goes well and you're fine with everything you have provided, click on I am not a robot. I certify that the information the information provided is true and wish to submit this request. Click on that and click on continue. So now that takes us to the payment page. Don't forget $5 if, if, if you need to request for the ATIP. So you need to get your card ready and uh, simply just proceed to secure checkout, which will take you to where you have to make the payment. So here you type in the information, the person here that is doing it for you, or if, if you are here doing it yourself, you type in your information, put your credit card number, everything in there and click on checkout. And once you do that, bingo, if everything goes right with your card, $5 is rejected, is deducted, and application is submitted. And in the next five to 10 minutes, you receive an email in the email, probably you must have put in there while filling the form, stating that they've received your application and they will get back to you as soon as it's been processed. All right. All right, that's viewers, it. you've seen the video, I've explained to you how you can actually apply for the access to information and privacy ATIP online. I mean, you've seen it for yourself. I've walked you through it. If you have additional question, you're not clear on the video that I've just dropped, you need more information, feel free to drop it in the comment section. And like I always do, I will dignify your question with an answer. If you enjoyed this video, please smash on the likes button. And likewise too, if there's anybody out there that you feel this video will help, feel free to actually share this video with him or her. And if you have anything you want me to discuss about any topic, any walkthrough you want me to do so that you know how to do it, feel free to drop it in the comment section. And as always, I will actually do justice to that. Please feel free to follow on our social, follow us on our social media handles, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I mean, sometimes I don't post video, but I'm regular, I'm frequent on my social media handles. Thank you very much for doing that. Please don't forget to hit on the like button until I see you again in my next video. Be nice and I hope to see you in Canada very soon.